paper crafters, this is Colette. Today I am very happy to show you how to make this absolutely gorgeous twist and pop card. Um, you can see it's just glorious in the Christmas papers from Christmas Wishes collection from Kaiser Craft. And the great thing about this card is when you undo the belly band and open it up, there's that beautiful twisting surprise that pops out to say, Happy Christmas. Um, so I'm going to start off by showing you how to make this card foundation and then I'm going to speed up the video and you can see how I've gone ahead and decorated this particular card. So let's get started. So to make this card we need to have three pieces of um, card that are going to make up the foundation. Now the first piece of cardstock we need to have that measures 12 inches by 4 inches and I have scored this on the long side at six inches. This is the bit that forms the actual card, the actual card itself. So once I've done that, cut my six by four, scored it at six, I can pop that to one side. The next piece we need is the piece that pops out and holds our little elements. And to make that little piece, we need some cardstock that is cut 10 inches by three and a half inches. And we need to score this one at two, at two and a inches, half. five inches and seven and a half inches. And once we've scored it, we're going to make the first fold as a valley fold. So remember the valley is going down like a V for valley. The next one is the mountain looking like the big M's or the beginning of an M and the third one is a valley. So we need to fold it like that and using our bone folder, really important especially with these mechanism kind of cards because it just trains the card in the direction you want it to go. Okay, now the third piece of cardstock we need um, is for the actual mechanism that sits behind and enables this twisting to actually happen. So for that piece, we need our cardstock, which is cut to eight inches long by three and a half inches wide. So eight inches by three and a half inches. Now, you, for those of you that are pretty good on your colors, you've probably noticed it's a slightly different color. I did run out of this card, but I'm not too worried because this one is a behind the scenes piece. So it's not crucial that it's exactly the same. So thank goodness I can use it and go ahead and make the video. So with this piece, what we need to do, we need to go ahead now and score this. And I thought I would do this with you um, because it's got a, a little bit of a, a funny score on it. So um, as always, I like to score with my Kaiser Craft ball tool and just into a little bit of dry soap, really glides um, and doesn't drag on the paper this way. And we need to score this at one and three quarters of an inch, one and three quarters of an inch on the short side. Okay, so all the way down, one and three quarters of an inch. Now what we need to do is we need to flip that around. I'm just going to zoom, sorry, zoom in a little bit here. We're going to flip that around and I'm going to make a little pencil mark. And the pencil mark I'm making is going to be here at the two and a quarter inch piece on um, both sides, on basically all sides, two and a quarter. And I need to do two and a quarter in from this end too. So that's one, two and a quarter. And also here. So we've got one, two and a quarter. So basically if you make a mark, if I just think about this a little bit more logically, if you make a pencil mark at two and a quarter and at five and um, three quarters. So two and a quarter and five and three quarters top and bottom. Now once you've made that you can then go ahead and score on the diagonal to create a diagonal fold. So what I need to do, you'll notice that on my scoreboard I've put these with a permanent marker, these black lines that go down on my scoreboard um, and this enables me to quite comfortably and easily do a diagonal fold. So I've got one pencil mark on this black line here 
and I've got the opposite pencil mark continuing on this black line this little bit further down. So just here, that's fine, and here. And then I'm going to go ahead and score that. So you can see that the pencil line and the pencil line have gone straight across. Now I need to do exactly the same with the other pencil lines to form a cross. So lining that up on the black, lining the corresponding dot up, dot up on my black line, and then scoring. So we have what looks like a cross in the middle and a score line going across. So now what we're going to do is to go ahead and fold it. The centre one is a mountain fold. It's a mountain fold. And again, because it's a mechanism card, we want those folds to be crisp. This is the Kaiser Craft Bone Folder. It's super, super cheap and, and really nice to use. It's a good size, good weight, and it gives you nice crisp folds. So opening that up, the crisscrosses need to be valley folds. So we're going to fold that on the valley. And we're going to do it the other way on the valley as well. So when we actually have this, we will then take this and it will fold naturally into this kind of position here. And again, just making sure it's all super crisp. Yep, can you see how that's just folded in? And I'm going to turn that over and make sure it's super crisp on that side too. So that's our mechanism that's going to make everything pop and explode. Now, what I like to use on these kind of cards is a really heavy, super strong tape. And this is this red uh, tape that you'll see in a lot of craft shops, and it is just perfect. You can use the standard double-sided tape, but it is not as strong, and I just find that this one here is just great for these. So I'm popping down some of this red tape on here, flipping it over, and doing the same on the other side. Now, with the red tape, many people say they can't get the backs off. Always a problem, they just can't do it. What you need to do is just burnish that red tape onto your project, nice and hard. And then, keeping fingers crossed, it, it normally does come up really easily for me. Okay, so yeah, it, it's, it's behaving again today. So as you, if you give it a good burnish, it's gonna be good. So I've peeled off the tape from one side so what we're going to do is we're going to then put that onto our card mechanism. But we need to do one thing before we do that. So I'm going to park this to one side and I'm going to cover the inside of my card first. So I'm going to cover the inside. And what I'm going to do is to take the Christmas Wishes collection. Now, seriously, if you've not seen this collection, go hunt it out and look for it. It, it is just very contemporary. The colors are glorious, and you know how much I just adore the paper pads. Um, this one is just glorious. Look at the glitters, um, just so many beautiful things, and the papers I've used today have come from this pad. And, you know, good on Kaiser Craft. They've thought about us card makers really well. All these wonderful little sentiments that we can just pop out and put onto our cards too. But what I need is I need this gloriously um, um, embossed piece. And I need the two sheets of this because you get two sheets from each in each pad of each design. And this is the way that I cover. I tend not to measure. I just tend to um, pencil mark. Now, if you come to my classes, I'm always saying pencil mark this, pencil mark that. So this one is a directional print, so just, just watch that directional pin, print. And I'll just turn this over to the back. I'll just make sure these pieces are, are level. And I'll just take one of the pieces and I'm just going to eyeball it and mark it. So just to zooming that in. Okay, so you can see I'm just going to leave a little border all the way around. So just making a little pencil mark here and a little pencil mark there on the bottom. So we've got one at the top, one there at the bottom. That tells me where I need to cut to get a perfect fit. So I have my, so I have my two pieces cut 
and now what I need to do is just, just to simply stick them into position and to do that I'm just going to use my Kaiser um, glue runner and you all know with the Kaiser glue runners to make sure you're just flicking them off to the right so you don't get any of those horrible stringy bits. So watch your directional flow and we're just going to pop that down inside like this, pop that into position and we do exactly the same again watching our directional flow of the design. I like to use tape and runners on cards, um, not the, um, the wet glue so much. I do find you've got to be really good with the wet glues not to make a big mess and not to make the paper buckle and I find that it's much quicker and tidier with the tape runners and, and this is particularly good and these Kaisel Craft ones are not expensive again. So now that I've done that I can go back to my piece I did earlier. Remember I took off the tape there so we've covered it and we're ready to start rolling here. Now what I need to do is to position this in the center and what I'm going to do is grab my ruler. I know that this is four inches. I'm just going to grab my ruler and I can see the two inch mark here already. Okay, so the two inch mark is, is there. Um, so I'm just going to place that on this side here, just below, just below the score line and at that two inch point and once I've done that again I want to have a good strong bond so I'm going back to that bone folder and I'm going to make sure that they are hugging each other really tightly. So once I've done that I know that's in position so I can now go ahead peel away the other two layers of tape. See how nicely they come away because I burnished that tape onto my cardstock and now I'm going to close up my card and again burnishing. Now on this point here if I was not going to cover this I would flip this over to the other side and burnish it there because by burnishing it like this I'm actually flattening the structure or the texture of the card. So just just watch out for that and um, we, we won't, won't want that to happen if it's going to um, be the card that's showing but I'm covering this so I'm not so worried. So when I open this up We've got our explosion ready to happen. So the next thing we need to do is to go back to our piece that we did earlier, the piece that holds the panel. And once again, we need to position this in the actual center of this card. So I'm using my ruler again, knowing that this is the two inch and this is my center of this card here. Okay, just zooming that in again, guys. All right. So this is the center where they've got the score line, and this two-inch point is the point of my, my card. So what I need to do is I need to move that up so the center and the two-inch are together. Now what I want to make sure is that these are in line, because they're the same width. All right. So two and the center. Now. Um, the first time you do that, this I recommend you just follow this little tip and grab yourself a pencil. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw a pencil line just on the top half and I'm going to draw a cross. So just to recap what I've done there is I've folded the first panel in and then on the background piece I've drawn a pencil line down the edge and I've got a cross. Now I'm going to repeat that on the other side. So I'm folding that in and I'm drawing a pencil line, but this time it's down the other end. It's, it's on the opposite square. So drawing a cross and a pencil line. Now once I have done that, I can remove my panel piece and I can adhere my tape. So again, I'm going to be using this red tape and I'm going to put, be putting that red tape inside the little box that I've drawn with the square. Yep, so just in there. So I haven't come past 
the pencil line. And I do exactly the same on the other little box that I did. So one and two. Now, of course, we want to pick this backing of the tape up easily, so I'm going to burnish that. I don't need to rub these marks out because they're not going to be seen. So, peeling that away, peeling that away. Same with the other ones. Now I can actually go ahead and stick down this piece here. So once again, just to be spot on and central, I'm pushing that to the side and I'm going to make sure that my score line is in line with that two inch mark. Okay, and then I'm making sure that it's in line with the actual edge. So once I've done that, I can go ahead now and adhere that down. Okay. Now I've actually got a teeny bit of card. It's a fraction of hairline piece coming here. So I'm just simply going to chop that away. No one's going to see it, so don't panic. Remember that lovely rule that there are no mistakes in card making. Well, sometimes there are. <laughs> okay, so a tiny little bit out there. All right, so once we've done that, that's our card foundation finished. And we'll just watch that work. The first time you just do need to kind of give it a little bit of a train. So once we've closed that, just give the whole thing a good, a good training. And so when we open that, we're ready for this to pop out. That wasn't hard, was it? So take the first one slowly, and then after that, you'll find that you'll really speed up with these, and they are super special cards. So that's how we make the foundation to uh, for this beautiful card. And what I'm now going to do is, um, I'm actually going to show you how I've gone about decorating this, and you might pick up a few tips and, and tricks along the way. So I'm gonna speed things up a bit.
it from me. I really hope you've enjoyed this card and I hope you have a go at making it. Please leave me a feedback on my YouTube site. It's just great to see and to um, hear from you. Don't forget you can subscribe to my YouTube channel where there's over 40 different videos on cards just like this that you can see. Um, you simply need to click the little red button on the bottom of the uh, YouTube uh, video here. Um, and that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.
So that's it from me. I really hope you've enjoyed this card and I hope you have a go at making it. Please leave me a feedback on my YouTube site. It's just great to see and to um, hear from you. Don't forget you can subscribe to my YouTube channel where there's over 40 different videos on cards just like this that you can see. Um, you simply need to click the little red button on the bottom of the uh, YouTube uh, video here. Um, and that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.